Well, it's that time of year again, Christmas time. And in my life of big trucks and low bucks, we're having our annual Christmas get together. And of course, working on snow plow trucks. I end up in the bustle of Seattle traffic in the silver dually with no power steering or brakes. I challenge Fred Zanko in the 632 powered sniper to a race with one of my mega trucks. Then I end up stranded in another Dodge by Vancouver off of I-5 with a seized up transmission. We pull out a Ford with a Chevy and of course, find out if this year turns out to be a white suburban Christmas. Well, if I were to say my trucks fight with me, that would be an understatement. They are pretty stubborn and there's a lot of things wrong with them. Some of it's my own fault for lack of maintenance, but uh, I'm trying to keep my white K5 running here so I can move the thing. It's got too many problems with it to deal with right now. So I'm moving it, moving my black dually and some other vehicles around. Of course, it's kind of hard to not get distracted up here by uh, you know, doing goof off things, but we're trying to stay focused today. And uh, it looks like we got Shay and Ashley up here. We got to get this transfer case out of this uh, free Durango. And uh, I'm also going to drain some fuel out of it to use in another rig. And we've also got some other projects going on. Jake and Mudder up here helping out, moving some logs and building materials around. And we're trying to strip out some core engines and pull parts. And we've quadrupled over that the investment in this because it now it's got a start new starter and a fuel pump in it seems like as quickly as we can bring another new rig up here to life one of the old ones dies kind of like this metro
Cody and Corbin are up here pulling parts off the metro for another car, but we kind of got distracted on this new car and its stuff, and, uh, well, I guess now we'll give the metro its final send-off if they got the parts off. It's beginning to look a lot like plow truck season. And we've got a lot of plow and plow trucks that need a lot of attention here. Uh, as it turns out, Ricky has this uh, Dodge with a plow on it. And long story short, I need the blade set up off of it to work with my other truck. And we got to move it into the shop. So we're using Cody's Subaru right now to get it moved. Whoa. Good thing we have the original one. <laughs> Bro. What that? That's not supposed to happen. I'm going to hook the clevis up to the other side and break it off. It's coming off. Well, I think she meant to settle. I'm not going to. I want it to get flat. Rip it. There it is. Well, I've got the plow off Ricky's Dodge, and I'm modifying things to work on my Chevy. And the truck turned out pretty well from what it looked like a little bit ago. So I've been trying to leave this lot for at least five to seven minutes now. There's uh, been no gaps in traffic that... Uh, actually, there have been a few gaps that I've noticed up there that I could fit through. But as soon as I see a gap up there, traffic here stops or slows down to the point to where that gap is gone by the time I have my opportunity to leave. So uh, I may be here for a while. Granted, I do have a plow, and uh, I could probably force my way into traffic, but that's probably not the legal or right thing to do. And now there's pedestrians crossing. Everything's working well on the truck, except the fact that it has death wobble too, unfortunately. Luckily, Skip got the motor in the yellow plow truck, and it's working well. Still got a few loose ends to tie up on it, but at least it moves some snow and also working on one of his customers trucks here another plow truck trying to get a motor swapped in we're trying to pull a motor out of another truck jordan's helping out getting started on my tan trucks new motor i'm pulling out some other plow truck parts and blades to rob pieces off of open differentials skip also got the engine swapped in for me in the blue truck and i'm trying to get the blade put on it so it's ready to go finally got all the pieces together so it's functioning now. Just needs an exhaust system. But there's still another plow truck without a motor that we pulled the 498 stroker out of. So we're taking the 454 out of this. Cody's helping pull it and Steve's getting it in the other truck for me because I'm busy up here with the other plow trucks and stuff. So, an ex-Christmas Suburban donated its engine to one of the plow trucks. And it's just a stock TBI 454. It's nowhere near the 498 aluminum headed stroker that was in this truck, but it still runs fairly decent. And it sounds good too. Still got the headers and the dual exhaust system that was with the other engine. So I'm going to pull over to the shop here and we'll see how we've made progress. Do the drag link on yellow. Yes. We have not done the rear tires yet. Okay. Trans leak and shifter not done yet. Uh, weld on blade. We've gone a different route so we can cross that off. And it's been welded on for another truck. Yes, I've done the fuel line, and yes, I've changed the plow setup to Meyer, and yet I've already used that truck twice. So This is all done? Yes. But now it has death wobble, but we'll come back to that. 84 blue, engine swap, done. But now we have to do exhaust, so we got to write exhaust is the only thing left on it. Uh, 88 IFS, that is done. I just drove that thing up here. That's all done? Yep. There's yours. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I've done the master cylinder, so you can cross that off. Bleed brake still needs to be done. And the rest needs to be done. Tan 83, still uh, still waiting on that. And the other one, sure. and the original 87 is not going to happen until the next decade. <laughs> 
And now, then we can add the new plow truck that I've created in my mind. This is terrible because I don't spell very good. I'll do it later. <laughs> and while we're at it, we might as well pull the other plow truck parts for future plow trucks. And of course, move them over by the shop the fun way. Was a night before Christmas, and into my house came in stumbling someone to lay on my couch. The cats to watch over this one who'd been stuck till morning when we'd wake to recover his truck. So we're on our way to try to rescue Stephen's truck that's somewhere up there. Of course, this won't drive down the road because of death wobble and other issues. It's not licensed, so we had to take the X498 stroke the plow truck, which now is a 454 of my other white suburban. Tow up here, unhook, and we're going to drive the rest of the way in. We're off the main road, which is good because this has a lot of play in the steering and it's not licensed and stuff. So, what happened to your truck? Oh, I was uh, going up a hill and there's a tree in the way, so I backed down it and then I just slid off the road in the dark at night. Yeah, alone. Because I'm smart. Yeah, at least they can't go far, so that's that's a plus about the situation. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is secure the front to a tree so I can't go down more. I'm gonna try to pull from behind and See what we can do. Probably run a snatch block to the base of one of those trees and try to pull that way. We're gonna run a snatch block to the base of that tree. Hook to the downhill side of the receiver on the Ford. And hopefully the front cable will keep the front end from going over and this will pull it back and up. Because we don't have any other trees further on the uphill side we can reach. Just reverse, but don't don't spin the tires, just kind of let it idle, creep back. Hold on, I got noises. So I got the rear strap, but the noise was is the being in park, torquing the motor over with the bad motor mount, fan hitting the shroud. So I'm gonna secure myself to a tree. We also added a snatch block and doubled the pulling power in the back of the Ford. most important thing of this whole process was this front hookup to keep the front end from sliding over more. Otherwise, without this, the front end would have just slid over and the whole truck would have been off the bank. So it's really important to tie off the front. The next big thing here is turning around. So I'm gonna turn around first. 20 point turn, turn around here too. Short and scary 
right down the highway back to the truck and trailer. Let's head back home now and take a look at another type of truck. Got this for 550 bucks. It's got a four cylinder Detroit, two and a half ton Rockwell, top loader axles. Basically has no functional brakes. It does feel like the brakes that are on it are sticking. That's kind of a good thing because the brakes don't really work as far as the pedal and the hydraulic system. Definitely it's starting to snow. Let's get this fired up and off the trailer. Driver's door does not function, so you have to enter and exit from the passenger side. Nice custom key here. I drove this white Suburban for a couple years at least. It was actually a good running Suburban and uh, I blew the transmission out of it. Actually it still would kind of drive. I just lost reverse in a hard uh, first to reverse shift trying to get out of a snowbank. It's our annual snowdrift days so I couldn't really drive it much more after that and it has a rebuilt title and it was hit in the front end by a moose. We kind of fixed it and got it going, but uh, with the transmission going out, it just wasn't worth fixing it anymore. So unfortunately, I had to come apart, decided to put the 454 out of this into the last year's plow truck because the 498 stroker's out of it and in the truck blazer now. So this is a good running 454 for that truck. I don't need a stroker to plow snow anyways. Also, we, Robert Schmidt came up, helped pull the rear axle and rear springs out of this. So we're going to head over tonight to Moses Lake to meet up with Justin Gilbert, driver of Frankenbogger, and we're going to drop off the 14-bolt rear axle out of this, transmission and transfer case out of that. They're going to go into his uh, wife's project. I'm also bringing over a smudge pot to drop off with him, and on the way in, I'm going to bring in a front axle from a square body Suburban that I sold to Hunter Thompson. So let's head out now. I'm going to drop off these parts, get a little money from the parts, and see if I can hold on to this money for Christmas or if I end up going off somewhere else and spending it all. And if I do, see what I come home with. So I continued on my way across the state pursuing an ad for a Suburban I found north of Seattle. Unfortunately, as soon as I got into this area, I lost all power steering and power brakes. Not sure what the problem is, but I'm picking up the Suburban now. I'm assuming my power steering pump went out, but there's nothing I can do about it now. 5.58 a.m. Traffic's already horrible. I got through the worst traffic, but I still have no tools with me and no parts stores are open, so I'm just going to take it slow and easy 
and get as far as I can. Well, according to the little computer, which is usually pretty accurate in this truck, I had 121 miles left to go 80 miles to where I was going to try to get fuel. Now the fuel light's on and I have 44 miles left to go 60 miles. That doesn't add up. I would say it's the furthest I've driven for a Christmas Suburban, but technically the first original white Christmas Suburban. I picked up clear over in, uh, I think, Springfield, Oregon, which is even further away than the Seattle uh, Edmonds area where I got this. And I drove that far for that one because it was a deal. I made some other deals along the way and it had a winch. Well, this one's got a winch too. It's just hidden, which is kind of neat. Well, made it with a few miles to spare, and still no power steering or power brakes or assist on the brakes. I got brakes, it's just uh, just like the steering, you got to work a little extra hard on it. So no parts stores are open yet. I'm out of the urban area of Seattle and the heavy traffic, so. I'm just going to keep on going, drive cautiously, and uh, try to get to a parts store when one opens and see where I end up where, uh, about that time when places are opening. Well, essentially it cost me about $98 or bucks from where I was dropping off parts anyways and Moses Lake to Justin, so selling the front axle to hunter for parts for 100 bucks basically covered that basically the suburban is funded by parts from other suburbans and somewhere a little ways back the silver dually turned 536,000 miles 71 miles back pretty much just drove the rest of the way with no power steering Go back to Spokane. I'm trying to take some things out of that garage to the other one. So loaded a few more things up. I'm trying to make space in there to bring a truck down and park it in there. Stop to use the bathroom and we'll uh, continue on the way all the way home. So I made it home. We've uh, lifted up the rear to try to air up the flat tire taking the battery out of the van we'll see if it'll fire up or mud we'll try to see if it'll fire up if he doesn't fall off the trailer it's probably been sitting for over a year for a second, a couple times. so we had to add a little bit of fuel that got drained out of the free Durango Let's try out the winch. It's doing something. I don't know if it's a Ramsey or if it's just a Ramsey remote, but it works. Let's try going in now. Oh man. Yep. It works. Well, I was starting to get a little worried there about finding a white Suburban before this year's Christmas, but I found one. I had to go a little farther than normal and had some problems along the way, but I'm back and we've got our Suburban. Now to learn a little bit more about what's wrong with it. Winter car rally, getting ready. Ooh. Every year we have our junk car rallies, usually different times of the year. Sometimes we do it in Christmas too, and we will this year just because we picked up a couple new ones. 
ultimately these are going to be used later on next year. But why not have a little fun with them now, test them out. So how, how's Bertha 2.0 running? Clicked. You're not moving. <laughs> this thing was knocking really loud and there was no oil in it. We dumped eight used ATF in it there. Put some used antifreeze in it and now some used oil because as my saying goes, used oil is better than no oil. We already found a 671 blower in the trunk and uh, Cadillac hubcaps. Well, the LeBaron's actually running a lot better than we expected, especially after it was knocking when we first fired it up. We knew the Buick ran and drove, but it doesn't have reverse, but that's okay. As long as you're going forward, hope you can deal with that, Bill. Lisa's going to ride with Bill a little bit too, and Sierra's riding with Cody. Figured it was the least I could do for Bill, get him another Buick since his other one blew up. And Cody doesn't seem to last very long with his cars. I guess we'll see if this LeBaron lasts longer than the Metro did. Tires might need air. There's a lot of weird noises coming from this. Of course, Mud's got to bring out the disco van. This. Dodge full-size van that we got for Jake's truck for a motor and transmission donor. Not much braking power on these things. There's not much stopping and there's not really much steering in a four-wheel drive, I've noticed. Oh, it's a brody-making machine. What are you talking about? Well, I guess now's my cue to take out the white Christmas Suburban. Uh, yeah, I would say it's got a blown head gasket. It's actually not a foggy day. That's just steam out the exhaust. Yeah, definitely blown head gas. Well, unfortunately that puts a damper on my white suburban Christmas, but looks like these other rally rigs are running pretty decent. Except for a dead battery in the LeBaron. So Mud's gonna push it back to the shop. It's that time. It's time to find the Christmas tree. I have pretty low standards when it comes to finding a Christmas tree, and uh, the way we find it is pretty much non-traditional. I'm taking the uh, K5 Blazer out since the white Suburban head gasket's not uh, not doing too great and uh, letting Cody drive the old white Christmas Suburban. Looks like everyone's got their own rig to rally around with in the, the woods here and uh, I'm in search of that perfect Christmas tree. But we're also just going for a drive for fun too. But the K5 doesn't have a whole lot of fuel in it, so I know when it's time to turn around and go back. I'm sure I'll find something on the way home, pretty close to the property. And there it is. I've got my Christmas tree. Now everyone's hanging out in the shop for a little bit. Before we head into the house, and we're going to watch episodes of Mountain Mafia TV and Mountain Havoc. And I'm going to do a little painting tonight. Bob Ross always loved his trees. And these cats really love Bill. And we'll get the Christmas tree decorated. And if that Christmas tree is not good enough for everyone, I guess I can just pull out the old faithful Christmas tree that's been here for years. The big old spruce. Well today Fred's out in the sniper, freshly back from Spinny Bent Fab and it's ready to go. 
has really been kind of highly untested. They've uh, had a few little setbacks here and there trying to get everything just right, but it's ready to go now. And Fred's just giving a little uh, test run. It's got a 632 in it. And that means there are two 632 big blocks on the property now. I've got the 632 in Carnage. Although, unfortunately, at Moye and at Mountain Mafia last, I uh, kind of toasted the transmission. It still does move, but it only had first gear then. And the Truck Blazer has got the 498 out of the plow truck. And it's running okay, but I just had a few problems with it, too, the last time I drove it. And it's not hitting on all eight cylinders anymore. But both mega trucks are here on the property, and so is Fred's. So maybe we'll do a little racing later. Although with as hard to start as the Truck Blazer, aka Disappointment is, I'm not sure that I really want to mess with charging a battery and trying to get the thing to run. But Carnage does run, and it still kind of moves. So we'll see how I'm feeling here in a few moments. I know with Fred out there ripping around with the mega trucks, it's making me want to as well. Let's talk to Fred real quick about what the sniper is. It is an avalanche engineering four seat sniper buggy. Uh, then uh, Ben, we get it. And uh, the motor is a 632. And we got the BKT tires that have traction like none other. And uh, even in slippery snow like this, they're just digging in and, and climbing. Um, really impressed with them. Um, yeah, it's alive again. And it's stronger than ever before. And I'm ready to get out there and start playing and having a good time. Carnage may still start and run, but it still has almost no oil pressure and the transmission is pretty well done for. It still moves, but first gear is slipping pretty bad. But I do have a Mega up here that runs, drives, shifts through all the gears on two and a half ton Rockwells. That's how you start at Detroit. I didn't think this was going to be a serious race, did you? Nope, Fred and I are just trying to have a few moments of fun, goofy as it may be. And he's just happy to test out the sniper. All I know is that it rocks, it's fun, I'm loving it, and I'm looking forward to getting to know her a little better. And we're back to pulling parts to try to make a little extra Christmas money. 
one of the parts is this 14 bolt rear axle out of last year's parts plow pickup and also checking all the fluids in the Dodge, running Chelsea's forerunner in, and then running to the Tri-Cities. Make a long story less long, I pull in here to use the restroom and grab something quick to eat. Well, quick to eat didn't happen very quick because I came out, went to start this up, but it wouldn't even uh, turn over enough to, to fire, like the battery was low or nearly dead, which didn't make any sense. Uh, I tried jumping it off my spare battery, one of my spare batteries, nothing, same result. Uh, this girl in a utility bed Chevy pickup that just happened to drive by that was attractive uh, offered a jump start, so I accepted and we uh, tried to jump start it and it would crank over barely like it was starting to crank over and then it would act like the battery was dead again and just drawing too much juice. I'm like, what the heck? So I let her go instead of waiting here forever for nothing. And I went ahead and tried my other battery that I brought with that would fit and uh, put it in and nothing. Same thing. Wouldn't turn over. So I got, uh, thankfully, Tanner Finch. I messaged him and he ran down here and uh, with his truck. And we tried jump starting again with that battery just for the heck of it. And same thing. Just wouldn't uh, it would almost kill all the lights and everything just like it's drawing too much juice and we used his truck to pull start me it didn't really kick off right away it was acting like something was dragging real bad and I uh, tried to hire gear it kicked over enough to get it running and then we heard some weird rattling noise We're pushing the, the limit here uh, at this point because parts stores are literally closing in five minutes. So real quick, I'm like looking and I'm like, I, maybe it's the belt tensioner. And we moved the belt tensioner, found out it was the, the AC compressor pulley was uh, all loose and or rattling and seizing up. So with uh, four minutes to spare, thankfully we diagnosed it and Tanner ran to the parts store, which is, did they just close? He had to knock on the door to get in to get the right belt because we tried rerouting the AC belt to that pattern and the belt was way too long. So it was a very quick diagnosis. Okay, let's get another belt. So he ran, just took off as quick as he could, barely got there in time, got the right belt. Thankfully they had that in stock. Now we're going to put it on and uh, see if it'll fire because I took that belt off and it fires right up freely. So hopefully that's the problem. And it was the problem, and I'm on my way. But this trip is far from over. Ah, oh, look at that. No problems turning over. You all didn't think I could be content with one new white Christmas Suburban for this year, did you? Especially since I didn't really get to drive it. So, went ahead and picked up this 95 GMC Suburban. It's got a 454 throttle body injected uh, engine in it. 4L80E. Looks to be a 14 bolt full floater rear. It's got a few issues, nothing that can't be fixed. Uh, one of the CV axle uh, ends up front. The bolts all fell out, supposedly, so hopefully I can bolt that back up. And they were driving it and using it pretty regularly, but uh, they had a new fuel pump put in it and a new water pump. After they got it back, for whatever reason, it was, uh, it, once it gets warm, it tries to stall out at an idle or won't keep running unless you stay on the throttle so might be a sensor or something like that oh there's a train there that was fast anyways there's the cv axle that needs to be bolted back up looks like the boot on it shot though 
but I've got the other part suburban up there. Maybe we can rob parts off of it. So, actually, sounds pretty good. It's got a is it a Magna Flow or something? Single muffler under it. Anyways, so that's uh, week number two. Christmas Suburban 2 from Longview, Washington. So now that we got the second white Christmas Suburban, it's time to head back home with it. So, something just seized up. I'm not really sure what it is. Maybe the transmission. I thought I felt something a little weird going down the highway, so I slowed down a bit. I didn't feel it. I thought, well, kind of felt a couple wind gusts, so I thought, well, maybe it's just the gust of wind came up and that's what I felt but it kind of felt like it was in the drive trains so I kept on going then all of a sudden I got something real bad some grinding going on and pushed the clutch in tried to slow down got over just in time to roll the stop here and it literally like locked up right here the only drivetrain component I have not checked recently is the transmission and something doesn't feel right in the shifter anymore and there's some noises when I let the clutch out, just sitting there in neutral. So, transmission was one of the main reasons I bought this truck, the MV5600. But I didn't uh, check the fluid on it. So, maybe it ran out of fluid and I've toasted a very expensive transmission. With the idea of uh, unloading the Suburban so I can drive it, I'm not really comfortable driving all the way home trying to tow a one-ton dually on this heavy trailer with a three-quarter ton Suburban that I've never driven before. But I can't even really drive this at all down the road because I just remembered this CV axle It's just hanging there because the bolts are missing and it's not that I need the CV axle or four-wheel drive to move it it's the fact that the hub is always spinning so the CV axle is constantly spinning that's why that boot is all tore up because they were driving it around locally with that spinning and I can't go down the highway with that just rotating at highway speeds I don't have bolts, I have them at home on a parts rig. So the only thing I can think of is taking half the bolts off of the other side CV axle. Which I think they're held on by uh, six. If I take three out of this, put three in that, that'll at least hold it in place and let it spin where it's not rattling around and dragging on things. And then I can drive the Suburban, I hope but I still need to figure out if I can get possibly someone else to come hook onto the trailer and get the Dodge on the trailer. Something did seize up, but I was also driving at freeway speeds. So if this was out of fluid, it was really hot. I'm crossing my fingers that maybe if I can get some sort of fluid brought here dump into the transmission and now that it's cool off uh, it might may or may not be seized up I don't know still uh, if it's not seized up from uh, from the heat and now that it's cool and I got some fluid in it obviously it's it's still toast but it, hopefully I'm hoping that's enough that I can put it in a gear and freely drive it onto the trailer if I can get to that point 
But there's a lot of what ifs, and I'm taking a big gamble here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make this all work with what I have, but we'll give it a shot. That's to be continued.